to my channel. So let's firstly just clear something up. I'm not about to star in Mastermind tonight. What I'm here to do today is to basically make a video ranking all of the Eurovision winners from the year 2000 to 2022 in order of preference, basically what I think is the best out of all of them and what I don't like as much. And this was requested by someone in the comments, so thank you, I'll pop up your request here. And also I am coming to you guys from Malta today. I've been in Malta for a while now just to visit some family and to get a little bit of a suntan, even though you probably can't tell right now in this lighting. <laughs> so let's start. I'm gonna start from my least favorite winner all the way up to my favorite winner and then give a little bit of comments and just general observations, I guess. So we'll start with my least favorite at number 22, and that is the 2002 winner, Latvia, Marie N with I Wanna. So I think a case with 2002, it doesn't kind of come across to me as a year that's very strong. I think the winner, the runner up and third place are all just very average pieces of music, to be honest. Yeah, I think if anything, this song was gonna come last in this ranking because it's just very kind of, cliche and gimmicky on stage. The reason why I think Latvia won that year is because of the staging they brought to the table, you know, with the costume changes. It was very, very kitsch and I think that's the only reason why it won. It was, from what I've read, nowhere near the top in the bookies odds at the time. It was actually Malta that was predicted to win. So I think with this one it's just a case of the song's not bad, it's quite average, it's not a winner song, but the performance, the stage performance is what did it. And the stage performance is pretty good for then. I don't think it would stand up now compared to the efforts that's put in in the current day contest, but it's still not bad, but it's something has to be last. And in this case, in the second last position at 21, I've got Azerbaijan's win from 2011, Running Scared by El and Nikki. So I watched this contest live. I was one of the first contests I was allowed to watch by my parents and was allowed to stay up because obviously Blue were one of the favourites to win that year. So there was a bit of buzz in the UK. So Azerbaijan's win, I think this song is pretty good. I don't mind it. I really don't mind it. I just think it's a case of, it's not anything fantastic. It's not fabulous. It hasn't been one of those winning songs from Eurovision that people have looked back and thought, oh yeah, my God, running scared. Oh, give me a bit of that. That's a bit of me. Like, I, I don't think anyone's really said that. I mean, let me know if that's been said and I'll stand corrected. But as of right now making this video, I can't really quote anyone. <laughs> so Running Scared, when I saw it live, I didn't really feel any connection to it or or kind of vibe from it that it, that it was going to win. It's a very kind of solemn piece, very of 2011 with the synth pads in the background, the piano, the sort of more, a duet driven piece as well it's very popular for back then i think too so it's 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 okay i don't mind it but i think um it's just not one of azerbaijan's best entries to be honest even though it's their only win i think they've got other entries that stand up much better than running scared but still i think the costuming the way they styled them the performance was very intimate and very personal which i liked and i think that's why it did really well. In 20th place is the 2018 winner is Israel with Netta and Toy. So this one is very quirky, it's very Marmite, a lot of people love it or they hate it. I'm one of those people that sort of veers off in the direction of disliking it a little bit. I really appreciate Netta's talent, I think it's a very creative piece, it's got a lot of different elements to it and a lot of it's been really well thought through. It's just a matter of personal taste. When I listen to it, I really don't think to myself, oh, you know, this is this is my type of music. This is something I'd, I'd be listening to five times a day. It's not, it's the kind of thing I turn off, to be honest. And that's not to say that it's a bad piece of music. I just think, again, kind of like with 2002, the reason why this won is because it did stand out and it had a very quirky and unique concept in both the sonic side of it and the visual side of it. And I think that's pretty good, but is it Israel's best winner? No, I don't think so. 
should it have won in 2018? I don't think so. I think there was other songs that should have won, but that again, it's a matter of personal taste and someone's got to be down here in 20th place. Unfortunately, I've got Israel. And then going on to 19th place, I've got 2008 winner, Russia, Dima Bilan with Believe. So this one, I used to like it a lot more back in the day when I heard it. I think it's very much a Timberland style. I think it was a Jim Beans produced piece of music as well uh yeah for 2008 it really kind of fit into the climate of the time with what was on the radio you had that sort of Nelly Furtado's loose album out there Timberland collaborating with Justin Timberlake in 2006 that was very much kind of in the top 10 of the charts at the time so Dima's piece for Eurovision reflected that and that's why it won the performance of course as well was very over the top you had the ice skater you had the violinist and yeah, it's very Eurovision, it's, it's very full of life. It's got an interesting visual element to it, which is nice, I think that's great. But as the years have gone by, I look back at this piece and I just think, oh, you know, this, has it aged well? It's not quite aged like a fine wine to me, it's just aged. And not in a bad way, but I just, th I think it's slowly kind of slipped down my list over the years. Oh, sorry, that was, um. <laughs> In Malta, they fire cannons constantly um, to celebrate different festas. And, and every day at noon, they fire off a cannon. I apologise if there's loud bangs in the background and that kind of thing. Sorry. So the Russian win from 2008 has slowly kind of slipped down the list. And I kind of understand why, because I, like I said, it has aged a little bit for me. But at the same time, oh God. <laughs> happen again um at the same time i do think it's it's got a nice melody it's been well put together it's quite charming in places too um but yeah i can't put it any higher on the list but i still think we shouldn't disregard this piece just because it's kind of very much of its time i still think it's been well put together the next on my list at number 18 i've got austria's win from 2014 rise like a phoenix so with this one it's a very, very well put together piece. I think it's beautifully staged, but I just think it's, Conchita is more than the sum of the song's parts. I think Conchita is just a, a great singer, a really great performer, and the song just doesn't quite add up to that. And I do think in 2014, there were other pieces of music, other acts and entries in that year that just stood up much stronger even today than Rise Like a Phoenix. But at the same time, I think it was a great win for them. I think it was great in general for society. So yeah, I, I don't dislike it at all, but I just think there's better winners here. So that's why it's low down. But I still look back on this performance and the win, you know, with a smile on my face. I think it was great. Next up at number 17, I've got Denmark's win from 2013, Only Tear Drops by Emily de Forest. Yeah, again, with this one at the time when I saw it, I thought, oh, wow, I think it's going to win. You know, it's got a really nice flute melody. It's well put together. It's got a really kind of sweet hook as well in the chorus. Very, very catchy. But as the years have gone by, I think just my tastes have evolved a bit. And this has been kind of left by the wayside for me. I still really do like it. I think it's, you know, very sweet. But I just prefer other winners and I can't really say much more about this because I don't really want to criticise a lot of these because I do like them it's just when you're kind of doing battle of the greatest it's hard to you know say much more and in 16th place I've got Ukraine's win from 2004 Wild Dances by Ruslana this one is fantastically staged I think the staging definitely elevates the song to a whole new level and to me that's why it won when you look at it kind of studio cut versus stage performance I think they really really nailed it and they brought it just to this fantastic kind of electric performance really really great, great stuff yeah but I do prefer their other winners as you'll see coming up for Ukraine I think in the early 2000s this song really stands out in the contest along with the other winners too because you have that kind of female-led pop song with a bit of a tribal element to it, a bit more of ethnic, you know, cultural references in there. And then you have these backing dancers behind them. I do like those entries, as you'll see. But this one, I think, is the least favourite of those kind of consecutive winners, as you'll see later. In 15th place, 
I've got Ukraine's win from this year, 2022, Stephania by Kalash Orchestra. So I really do like this one too. And I keep saying that phrase because I don't think I dislike any of these coming up, to be honest. I just think I prefer other ones. This one is beautifully staged, to be honest. Looking back, you think of kind of the face in the background. The really nice moments there in the music where it slows and it lulls and you get this lullaby-like feel, but then they kind of explode into the rap portions too. It, it really comes to life on stage and it is a great winner, I think. It's, it's a great song. It's nice to hear that rap music wins Eurovision too, just like we've seen with rock music. Yeah, I, I can't really fault too much about this one and I was really pleased to see that they won this year. And then in 14th place, I've got Germany's win from 2010, Satellite by Lena. This one again, when I watched it back in the day, I really enjoyed it. I think it's definitely geared towards younger girls, maybe. I do like it too. I think maybe as the years have gone by, I've sort of grown to like other types of music, but I like especially the quality of Lena's singing voice. I think she's really unique to be honest she stood out so much that year in the contest and especially when she came back in 2011 as well i think it was nice that they used lena again yeah so satellite is really quirky it's kind of got a funky beat as well and i like the guitar in there too kind of adding these nice licks here and there moving kind of the chords progression down chromatically occasionally as well which makes it have a bit more flavor it gives it a little bit more energy and vibrancy too which is great so yeah i i do like this one and at 13th place i've got sweden's win in 2015 which is heroes so heroes i think what they did really well with this one is the staging especially as you compare the melfest staging to the eurovision staging it just went you know, a completely different level. It's great to see. But I think with this one for me, I think there was, a, there was a song in the charts at the time by David Guetta, which sounded exactly the same as Heroes and I couldn't really get over that. And I didn't have this as my winner at the time. It was still quite high up, but it wasn't right at the top of my list, for instance. But yeah, when I saw the live performance, I thought I don't mind if this wins because they really have put a massive effort into this. And I think this it was a case of the staging really helping the song to come into its own lane as well. And it did kind of outclass a lot of the other acts on, on the night too. But I guess with Sweden's entry that year, what it do, what I think it was is a catalyst for all the next years, for all the countries to kind of step up their staging a bit because Sweden showed them how it was done. They won. And then the next year you had people like Sergei Lazarev with his staging. And then again and again, you had like Greece in 2021, just kind of pushing the boundaries a bit with staging and the way that you can take a song and then make it come to life a bit more with the use of LEDs and things like that. So I do think this was a great winner and it was a pivotal moment for Eurovision. So at number 12 in my list is the Netherlands win from 2019, Duncan Lawrence with Arcade, which is a song that went viral years after the contest as well, which was great to see. So this one, I remember at the time of the contest thinking, why has everyone put this as their first place. I just didn't quite get it because this song didn't really affect me too much when I listened to it. I did like the kind of playing around with tempo. It, it moves around between 6-4 and 4-4 four, four, I think, which is really experimental and of course as a musician I absolutely love to see that and hear that at Eurovision. But with Arcade I just think the chorus for me didn't quite hit hard enough and it lacked this something or other. But then again I think what made up for it was those really, really nice verses, like I said before, with the, the tempo changes and the playing of time signature, really nice stuff. And then they staged it really well as well. They kept it very simple with the blue colour scheme, the light bulb, the piano. I think it did really well. The camera shot as well with the sort of strobe light behind Duncan Lawrence just looked really, really nice too. I think they did a fantastic job. So yeah, this is kind of mid in my list. And it is growing on me over the years, the more I hear it, because it did go viral. I do think to myself, oh, I like this, I just don't love it. And then 11 in my list is Serbia's win from 2007, also their debut that year, which is just astonishing. It's amazing to see. So Molitva, I remember seeing it, I think the, the morning after they won on the news. And I just thought, wow, this is, you know, a really great piece. 
it's well staged, there was something very rousing about it. Yeah, this one I think has stood the test of time because there's a sort of anthemic chorale type arrangement they have about it. The key change, the way that the music flows towards the end and grows, it's really rousing and really well put together. And I do think this is one of the best Eurovision winners we've had in the last couple of years. It really is just one of those songs that will stand up in decades to come. We'll look back and think, Molitva, that was just such an amazing winner. And then my 10th favorite winner of all the winners I've got here is Ukraine's win in 2016, 1944. I think what really does it for me with this song is the use of modes. They use these sort of mugams, I believe, or a type of modes that come from Crimea and where Jamala is from. And they really blend that nicely into the music. And then you've got this more trip hop beat in the background as well, which makes it a little bit more interesting. It takes the song in a new direction, which is great also to hear. And then that build up right at the end, it's so emotional, emotionally charged, full of just, passion is really lovely to watch and the staging with that tree growing behind her as well i just love it i love to re-watch this performance to be honest it's, it's really really well put together and just so bitter and painful as well the, the emotion in there is oh, it's amazing in ninth place i have greece's win from 2005 which is my number one helena paparizu this one is great it's one of those like I said, female-led pop ethnic bops, I guess, with the backing dancers. They've done this one really, really well. This one is just so well put together with, the, they have that string instrument, which is so cool. Really, really well performed as well by Helena because she was dancing and singing. She didn't sound out of breath. She held her own. I think this one blew all the competition out of the water in 2005 as well. It really did a good job of that. Yeah, this one's really nice as well because it has that sort of ethnic Greek sound where you, if you go on holiday to Greece, you hear all of the, the this type of music and it still kind of holds up today. It hasn't aged badly. I think it's aged super well. Yeah, really great winner. At number eight, I've got Turkey's win from 2003, Sir Tabirina with Every Way That I Can. So this one, I have a, a personal playlist of loads of Turkish pop because I really like Turkish pop. And this one, I always play it because I just love the use of the violins in this song. It's really, really great, really well mixed in. And then the traditional Turkish instruments mixed with the more hip hop type of sound too. I think that's a really nice blend. And then also I just love the kind of vocal performance too. It's all very high impact, high energy. She sings very forte, very loudly, which I like as well. It's kind of pushing her voice forward. I think it's a technique that some singers use and I absolutely love it. I think it was really well staged with the backing dancers, the kind of belly dance. I think that looked great. And of course this one from really early on in the running order too, which is, you know, it's, it's really nice to see that because a lot of people think the running order has like a massive effect on whether a song will win, but actually with Turkey, they managed to win from, was it fourth or fifth in the running order? So that's great as well. And then in seventh place, I have Estonia's win from 2001, Everybody. So this one, a lot of people probably don't understand why it's so high up because a lot of people don't like this song. Like I've said in previous videos, I love disco beats. I love the use of kind of the, the modern sounds, or of course the 2001 sound now with the 70s disco blended together. And what they did here is they have this kind of dad dancer anthem, I guess, and it really worked out quite well. I think it's just full of so much energy. It gets you on your feet. It's really catchy. It's just got a lot of life, a lot of spark behind it. And I think I feel like it does stand out. A lot of the songs that have won are very melancholic, but this one is so happy. And that's what I like about it. I like me a bit of a happy song, but not too much because I do like sad songs to feed my depressed soul too. Of course, it sounds really bad, but yeah. And then at number six, I have Finland's win from 2006. I love me a bit of rock, especially a hard rock. Hallelujah. This is so good. This one really stood out, obviously, because of the costumes, just how well written I think this song is too. Really nice guitar riffs in there. 
not too difficult to understand as well. Very simple um, use of rhythms there with the guitar licks, but that's what makes it really catchy because if you overcomplicate things, you get kind of a, a mishmash and a bit of a slurry. But with, with Hard Rock Hallelujah, the simplicity of it, and then using kind of the lyrics and the melody lines to push to the forefront really helped the song stand out. And of course, the you know, the costumes as well, that obviously helped. But yeah, Hard Rock Hallelujah is one of those winners I think we'll look back in decades as well, like with Molliver, and just think, yeah, this is just iconic. So yeah, it has to be high up on my list, definitely. And then fifth place is Denmark's win from the year 2000, Fly on the Wings of Love by the Olsen Brothers. So this one again, I think people might be surprised it's quite high up. This is just my kind of music, to be honest. I like acoustic guitar, I like duet music, I like the blend of the voices too. But for me, what really does it with this one is the verses. I think the verses are really nice because they add that really nice chords in there. If I had my guitar with me, I could try and play it, but they use unconventional chords in there. bubblegum pop songs all in that year and then this one won I love that I think that's really cool <laughs> I, I mean I you know maybe I should be a boomer I don't know but I think this is a great winner you can argue with me in the comments but I do think this one does stand out amongst all of the others so yeah in fourth place I have got the iconic win from Sweden in 2012 Lorene with Euphoria so this one has such an effect on me when I watch this I can't remember how old I was now but in my mid-teens when I watched this um I saw Lorene's haircut and I just said to my mum can you like can you give me the the fringe and it's like the worst haircut I've ever had it doesn't suit me but yeah that's how much of an effect this had on me I think it was just captivating the performance the gothicness of it and this song 10 years later it still sounds innovative and modern even though it has that kind of I be the EDM sound that was very typical of 10 years ago it still has that really nice beautiful opening with the strings in the, in the extended version and oh my goodness what I love about this song is the key change the key change is so clever it starts off in B minor I think and it uses the kind of the B minor scale with like an A chord and a G chord in there. And then it randomly flips in the chorus to F sharp minor, which is really cool too. It modulates, I believe, to the fifth, minor fifth, which is really cool. That's really cool. This is why this song is so iconic musically and also visually, because it's really, really innovative. And like I said, it stands the test of time. I still listen to it today and I just in awe of it. I think it's brilliant. Now, in my third place is Italy's win from 2021, Monoskin with Zitia Buoni. This is iconic. I think the performance, the song, everything about this is just loud. It's bashful. It's full of so much charisma and energy. The way that Damiano carried the whole performance with the camera, he absolutely gave it his all. The rest of the band as well absolutely did an amazing job. They held their own. They kind of didn't look like they were in the background. They kept their stage presence throughout the whole three minutes. And this song, the way it built, and especially that middle eight as well. Oh, the middle eight of that song is so strong. It's just got this kind of dirty vibe. I love it. I think it's really well written. And then you have the guitar solo at the end, which is a really nice way to end the song as well on a high. The guitar solo is really interesting as well because it kind of does a downwards movement instead of an upwards movement, which I think is just really unconventional, but very cool. 
and believe me I have tried to play this guitar solo on my own guitar and I don't think I will ever show you because I absolutely butcher it but yeah this is how much I love that song this is just so great to see a rock song win Eurovision it deserves it just great in second place is Norway's win from 2009 Alexander Reback with Fairy Tales so oh this one as well I could gush all day about this this was probably like my first Eurovision crush not gonna lie absolutely still love this song I think the violin really brings the song to life which is you know that goes without saying I think the violin the way the violin's been written into the song as well is really really cool it's just kind of the, the use of the chords I don't play violin but the use of the chords on the violin and then bringing back that refrain every so often in the song is really really effective it kind of rounds everything off and then of course you had the backing dancers the interesting costumes it did a good job and it's a very sweet song as well it it just yeah everything about it I love it I can't say much more but yeah I still absolutely love this song and of course you probably guessed now but my favorite winner of the last century I guess is Portugal's win in 2017 Amar Pelos Dos so this one when I first heard it I loved it when I saw it live I fell in love again I think the way that this song in the whole competition just stood out, him being on the B stage on his own with a really nice backdrop, just no no kind of bells and whistles. It was just him, the song and the voice. And that was it. And it won me over. It absolutely did. I think it won the public over as well. This song is so beautiful. It's beautifully put together. The depths as well in the vocal line, it goes really, really low. And then it gets a little bit higher as well, especially as that was written by a woman. Just, you know, is is fantastic. I, my words are all in a complete mess because I gush over this song. I think it's one of the best songs we've had in almost 30 years, maybe at Eurovision. It's beautifully put together in terms of the arrangement. You've got these orchestral instruments as well. It's almost like it's something you'd have in, the, in a film soundtrack. Very, so very kind of sentimental very well put together that's all I have to say but I think it will take a lot to kind of replace this as my favorite Eurovision winner I guess of the last century so let me know down below in the comments what all of you guys think and stay tuned I'll be back next week for more of a musical themed video and yeah I hope you guys have a good rest of the week stay tuned and I'll see you soon bye